excited to watch this video because if y'all don't know my story, um, well, I don't want. I'm probably gonna tell in. The, I'm probably gonna tell in the middle of the video my story on my father and you know how everything worked out. But if, I think I actually told that story. On one of the videos I posted, uh, I forgot what video it was, but I think I actually told the story. But look, I'm gonna tell it again in the middle of the video, or if they bring up something about fatherhood. But as y'all can see, man, we got another Officer Tatum video. This is the importance of fatherhood. So I'm actually excited to hear about this because I just want to know what's his point of views on fatherhood, and we're gonna see what they're talking about, man. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow me on all social media platforms down below. Without further ado, let's get it, Officer Tatum. So you 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 are a father. Um, I know you have children. I, I've seen your children on social media, and you're married, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I think like like you and I both have a similar story in this because. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know your full story, but I had a child before I was married. I was saved and it was it was a wake up call for me in Christ. And then I was able to get myself to a position to get married. And I got married to my wife now. And it's it, it's way it's much it's a much better situation when you're married and you're doing it the right way. So I want you to explain like just a little bit, whatever you whatever you want to address, just your story of how. You know, you ended up now being married. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you were married before, but you married now. But before you had children, so just explain that, man, because I think some brothers need to hear an explanation of, you know, a story outside of perfection. You know, everybody didn't have a perfect journey. So, yeah, and I, you know, what? I actually love doing that. You know, so my life was jacked up because I never had a father in my life. So I learned a lot of things through trial and error. I never had like a dad to sit there and be like. Hey, dad, tell me about girls or how do, you know, you know, I didn't even really understand the difference between, you know, women and, and men. So I that's, that's that's similar to my story. I didn't have a father. I didn't really I didn't really understand the importance of being a man. But shout out to my mother, because honestly, she showed me it was hard for her to show me how to be a man until my stepdad came in my life. He kind of toughed me up, kind of made me the person I'm in today, kind of got me closer to God. He did kind of he did get me closer to Christ. Because before then, I was still out here uh, doing what I want to do. I was I was a bad kid in school. Like I was terrible. I, I wasn't terrible. I was I was terrible. Okay, I was terrible. I was terrible in school. I didn't you know I didn't do anything. Like I I was just bad. I was just bad. Not because I didn't have a father. It's because I was just too busy focused on the people around me. But I think I think part of it did have to because my father wasn't in my life. He passed away when I was three. But then before that, even when he was alive, he still wasn't in my life. The man not even know my birth certificate. So it's just like, you know, it's crazy to me. Like, if you, I'm not even going to get into that. Come on, we just go, we just go, go ahead. Come on. I had to learn a lot through trial and error. So yes, I was divorced twice. And, you know, a Damn. lot of Christians, they judge me for that. But I don't care because I know God is with me. The evidence that he's with me, you know, the Bible says you would know them by their fruit. And so a lot of people are so religious. It, it's like, it makes them mad that God would use somebody who's been through a divorce or something, which is ridiculous because everybody that was in the Bible, you know, they was jacked up. They had some kind of issue. And so I openly will tell people, yes, you know, I got married at 19, most, you know, uh, the good girl or whatever, but, uh, you know, fornication. So I thought it was the right thing. You know, I got a pregnant, boom, got married. Then they, they sent me to Iraq probably like seven months into my marriage. So, you know, I was gone a whole year. That wasn't good came back for about a year then they sent me to Afghanistan for another year and it, after that it was it was done like he must it, the marriage army. just it was over you know what I'm saying it was too much and so then I kind of got like on the, the you know kind of like a rebound kind of thing and I was still you know learning whatever 23 24 and then the army sent me to South Korea for a year and the same pretty much the same mm -hmm. thing like it was done so people judge me and I kind of just you know I, I smile I say God they don't know because they probably wouldn't have survived I know they wouldn't survive with the things that I went through. And so, you know, I, I tell people, look, it don't matter how broken or messed up you are. You know, if you acknowledge, hey, God, I messed up. Hey, God, I never had a father. Hey, you know, I made some mistakes and I'm trying to do better. He says, I remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. It's done. And so right. I, I never want people to look at me, bro, and be like how I used to be. I used to look at pastors. I'm like, man, he probably... You know, he probably never think of lust for God. His life perfect. And I used I used to beat myself up like I could never be like that. So I never want nobody to look at me like that. I tell people, look, man, I'm I'm definitely not perfect. I definitely have issues. That's another thing with me. By me being a young Christian, by me being 18 and a Christian, 
a lot of people judge me based off my past. I remember I posted some scripture about uh, just it wasn't it wasn't towards the homosexuality people. It wasn't towards that. But what it was towards was um, showing people how to get into heaven. And it wasn't it wasn't me. It said it in the Bible. First Corinthians six, nine. It's it, it showed all the people that won't make it into the inherit the kingdom of God. It also say that in Galatians two, I believe it's Galatians. I believe it's in Galatians also where it speaks on people that won't make it into the uh, inherit the kingdom of God. So I posted that and people was judging me like, but didn't you have sex already? Didn't you do this? Didn't you steal already? Didn't you curse already? Like, exactly. Then I do that all, already. That's my past life. My new life ain't got none of that. I don't curse. You know, I might slip up and say the N word, but that's not really a cuss word to me. I don't let that word affect me. So I might end up slipping up saying the N word sometimes. But that word is it just a word to me. Like I don't find that as a cuss word. That's not me having a foul mouth. But a lot of people judge, and that's why I hate. I hate that a lot of people judge me based off my past. But really, people don't know my life story. People don't know that I was raised without a father. My mama was a single mother for the Lord knows how long, and she tried her best with me. I'm the only child. I'm not the only child no more, but I was the only child, and she tried her best with me. People just don't know the story. So I just let people judge. You can say, yeah, I had yeah, I had sex already. I got three bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And I was saved when I got one of them. I still made mistakes. But now I'm celibate. I don't have a girl. I'm I'm done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm done. I'm, I'm living for Christ now. And I'm going all in, not 99%. I'm putting my 100% in. So I definitely have to die daily, as Paul says, you know, to myself. It ain't nothing good about me. The best part about me is God. So I'm not, you know, ashamed to tell people about that. I, and, you know, realize, you know, when you judge people, because that's that's the thing I hate about the church. These people be so fake. They be as fake as a lot of these politicians. They try to act, you know, holier than thou. They try to act righteous. And so some people, you know, their sins and mistakes be more public. But yours are private and God still, you know, God still cares about those two. And one of the examples I always use, bro, because I, I know about this firsthand, people will look at a young lady. She got a couple baby daddies, a couple kids, and they'll be like, well, I would never do that. I would never been in that situation. They look down on her. But then what they don't see is maybe at three years old, two years old, she was getting molested by her uncle or the pastor, and it just messed Thanks. her up. So they, they just see one part of the story, and they judge. And so, you know, one of my favorite Bible verses, he said, I become all things to all men that I might win them. So I try to meet people where they are regardless of how dirty, bad, or ugly, and I just love on them, you know, and say, hey, it's hope for you. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's, in, that's an incredible perspective because nowadays, you know, it's okay to give what they call righteous judgment. You know, if you if you are going to critique somebody or whatever in the faith, in God, with, with the right intentions, it's, it's perfectly fine to do that. However, people are misguided in judging people inappropriately. You know, I would never, I'm so holier than thou. And they didn't have three abortions. You know, that's the reason why you don't have kids. Because that that's another thing. People judge me off my tattoos. I, I be at work. They be like, because I'm, I, I be sp spreading the word of God at work. I spread it in the right way. I don't try to force it on nobody because I never want to force my religion uh, or forcing them to have a relationship with God. What I want to do is just guide them. You know, like the one saying, you can lead a you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. That's just how I am at work. I try to do that work, but they always judge me about my tattoos. Oh, you got tattoos, but don't they say uh, don't say in the Bible that you shouldn't put any marks or cuttings on your skin. It also say you're not supposed to get a haircut. It also, it says a lot that I didn't never I never once said I was perfect. I never once said I was perfect. I'm addicted to tattoos, and that's not one of my convictions. But at the same time, I know I need to stop. That's why I haven't got a, well, I just got this one done. But that's this like a almost, what, a couple weeks old now. But I'm low-key just trying to stop. I'm trying to stop. That's like being addicted to pornography. I was addicted to pornography, and I'm still in, and I try to stop. I'm spreading this with y'all because I'm just showing I'm not perfect, bro. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect at all. By me being a young Christian and not having sex, and I was addicted to sex before I became saved, it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to say no sometimes. That's why I got one of the bodies when I was saved. I got one of my bodies when I was saved because it was hard for me to just say no. Because I was addicted to it and I missed doing it. But now I'm just trying to live for Christ. And I'm still going to make mistakes regardless. We all going to make mistakes. That's why I'm just trying to live for Christ fully. No matter what people say, they say judge righteously. But a lot of people judge in the wrong way. Oh, wow. 
Oh, you got tattoos. Oh, but you supposed to be a Christian. Stop putting Christian on everything, bro. No, I didn't. I didn't preach, you could, no, I just have a relationship with God. God know where my heart at. I accepted the free salvation. I got baptized. Like, I'm just, I just have a relationship with God. Stop putting Christian on everything. Christian this, Christian that. Let me tell you a little secret. Not all Christians going to make it to heaven. I, I, had, I was to a point, bro, when I was in college and I had, I was in a choir. I would say I was at a holiness church, man. I was at Apostolic Church. I'm in the choir. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm cleaning the toilets, and I was a an usher, and like I was the up and coming. You know, I was on fire, bro. Me, I was I was just bold, man. I'm out here witnessing on Ooh. campus. I'm trying to save everybody. I'm trying to save my whole family. You know what I'm saying? So, I, and I was, and God gave me an ability to speak. So, you know, I'm I'm very convincing. So, a lot of people were getting saved when I got saved. I'm inviting people to the church, and you know, I, I you know dealing with a young lady that i was dating when i when i wasn't saved and then when i got saved i tried to like cut it off but it was like okay i don't have to be so holy than thou and, and cut this person off i just put boundaries there okay obviously right. the boundaries don't work like that and then not having a person to hold me accountable like accountability partner or whatever and i and i and i fell for it so then you know when she got pregnant brother this was this was this was horrible for me you know because i'm embarrassed i'm, I'm gonna get embarrassed because at our church, you got to sit down. You know what I'm saying? You, you got a kid out of wedlock. You do a scene that's open that people can see. You got to come out the choir. So I had to sit out the choir. You know, I had to apologize to the elders. I had to apologize to the members of the church. Like, it, it was it was pretty significant. Um, however, I think that, you know, God can re replace some of the things that you've lost in those situations. And, and I don't want to go on a tangent, but... I think that people have to understand that people are going to make mistakes just like David did and all these other people not saying that that's yeah. your, your, your journey, but you got to understand that God can recover that. If you say, you know, you want God to forgive you, you repent. God will forgive you for those sins that you create. The problem is that I see a lot of people that they won't even acknowledge that there's, that it's a sin. That's facts. A lot of people won't acknowledge their sins. Like me, uh, I know in the Bible it says confess your sins to others, you know, not just confess it to God, but confess it to others. So I always confess my sins to others. And I always find someone that's also a Christian and that I trust, that I know they ain't going to go out if we fall apart and say, oh, you know, Jalen do this. You know, Jalen did this. Like, I don't want I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that. That's why I always try to find that right Christian that I trust. I need somebody that I trust that can hold this because I want to confess it so I can show people. And then I also go to work and tell people my sins too. I confess my older sins. I confess the new sins because I'm not perfect. Whether they judge me or not, I'm not perfect. I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, I'm the most perfect, perfect Christian ever. I don't curse no more. I don't smoke. I don't drink. First of all, drinking is not even a sin. That's that's not a sin. It's getting drunk a sin. But, you know, some Christians say, oh, drinking is a sin. But it's not. But anyways, man, I'm off this video, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow me on all social media platforms down below. Shout out to Officer Tatum and um the other guy. I forgot his name, Mark Rogers, something like that. Uh, what was it? Um, Marcus Rogers. Shout out to him too. Also, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Being what the pain. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace. <laughs>